Welcome back to the Demon Tweaks channel. In this video, we've got something really special lined up. Richard from ITG has kindly brought along his awesome Subaru rally car. Now, Richard, I'm kind of new to the rally world, so you're gonna to have to guide me a little bit on this. So show okay. me, tell me about it, because I can see loads going on here and I need to know everything. Yeah, so, well, fill me in. look, there's, in Impreza terms, there was, there was WRC and there was Group N, and then there was something in the middle that people built from Group N cars. Okay. Um, with the advent of R5 cars coming on really strong, what we wanted to do is create a car that was as close to that sort of concept as we could. So we've moved a few things around, we made the car as light as we could. I, I, wanna, I wanna show you a few things on yeah, it. Yeah, so show me, let's, show me. Let's go. Yeah, let's have a look. So uh, headlamps and things like that are all standard. We, um, we're we using a, an XTC competition damper. So really good dampers on the car, lots of suspension travel, which is different to a Group N car, yeah. more akin to a World Rally car. Yeah, I've seen a few pictures of you with the wheels off the ground, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. So you can really see that suspension travel. Yeah, there. you can really see that sort of extended suspension yeah, yeah. travel. And it's not just a case of bolting suspension on, it's a case of engineering some different parts of the car for yeah. that. Uh, some bodywork changes need to go on for that. Okay. So then obviously we're using uh, a few things that obviously you can get from Demon Tweaks, like so, uh, uh, the wheels are from Revolution, which okay. uh, is something that I can get from you guys, as are the brakes. It's got a six-pot AP racing caliper and disc. Yeah, they're massive. Um, yeah, they're good. And actually, the back ones, look they, they look a bit small, but that's yeah. kind of as big as you need because most of the braking is done on the front wheels on a car like this mm -hmm. um, because when you reduce the weight, it's coming from sort of the, the, this, this area of the car backwards, basically. Right, okay. Okay, in fact, actually, why don't I show you under the bonnet? Okay. So under the bonnet here, we've got the big chevron motorsport intercooler yeah um that's a really special thing a lot of people will be looking at this video saying why has he not bought uh, a front mount or some description this intercooler is really special made by a fantastic manufacturer here in britain it's n it's not a cheap thing yeah but the performance is just literally second to none right okay um yeah, you can see, obviously, you, you're drawing air in for that from, yeah, I mean, actually from that, the intake. Okay, yeah, right? I mean, that, that's a stock thing. That's the same as on any Impreza. Right, okay. Uh, somebody watching this will, will, will recognize this if they've got an Impreza. Yeah. But the common thing to do is to, is to have a, a big intercooler at the front. Yep. But then you have a lot of pipe work and a long way for the, for the air to travel. Okay, so, so you're reducing that distance yeah, to keep well, the boost, right? Yeah, well, this is the stock location. Yeah. Normally, there's a lot of heat soak and so on, but this particular cooler supplied by Chevron is fantastic. So yeah, it's, it's a great, it's a great thing. I don't know whether the camera guys can see, but this is a, an area of modification on the car. Yeah. So all of this inner panel here has altered. Okay. So to get the extra suspension travel, yeah. you've got to move this, this right? top mount up yeah. and you've got to make sure that when the wheel is on full compression, yeah. so full bump basically, it's not going to touch. Gonna touch yeah. yeah. So now we've got a lot of bump travel and a lot of droop tra travel yeah. with these new dampers. So this is completely, this whole area welded, completely yeah, custom it, it, yeah, all and this, painted to match, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proper job. Proper job, yeah, <laughs> not half a job. Yeah. So yeah, no, all of this is different. So everything from here, all this inner panel, top mount there, that's all different. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously, who knew, we got an ITG air filter. Yeah, you did it's a great big one. the biggest one you could get, right? The biggest filter that you can fit in, <laughs> uh, we've, we've got it. Normally I, I run a, a foam oversot, okay. but actually just because I've been doing a couple of photo shoots uh, yeah. the last couple of days, I've, I've just left it as a, as a pleated one, just as an advert for ourselves. Okay. Yeah. yeah so good. the car, as far as power is concerned, the car would have about 330 horsepower and approximately 600 newton meters of torque. That's, okay. that's typically what you'd expect from a good engine. Yeah. I actually buy these engines from Graham Sweet, who's GT Motorsport. He's the best Subaru engine builder in the world. Wow. He's been building the engines for um, you know Colin McRae and Richard Burns and so on and so forth, yeah. and now has his own business based, based just down the road from me. Amazing, so, so I'm, no I'm, expense spared then? No, no, I'm <laughs> lucky because he helps me a lot and um, yeah, he's a great guy. Turbo's coming from Owen Developments. There's a lot of other Turbo Smart parts on the car which are really helpful. Okay. That Owen Developments Turbo from, from Chevron is a game changer though. Yeah. Really good for developing torque, really low down as well. Cool, and then like sort of, Coming back to the braking that you mentioned before, yep. um, I get, 
I keep I keep seeing it because one of the coolest things for me with rally cars is that that braking system, your hydraulic handbrake. Yeah, that's right. right. Cool. Yeah, well, let's let's, let's have, have a look. look. Have a look inside. So and uh, yeah, obviously this as well, significantly yeah. lighter. Yeah. No, no, listen. Note to any any viewers: don't use Loctite on your Perspex windows because it makes them crack like mine. You heard it here first. Top tip: uh, yeah, if you're top, building your own rally tip, car with Perspex windows, hack, don't use Loctite. <laughs> So inside you can see we've got a sequential box that Samson has provided for me, which is absolutely fantastic. It's literally seamless. I've got a guy from a company called Hartech Motorsport who looks after the engine mapping, and he's also doing sort of gearbox strategy, launch control, anti-lag, all those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, the, the gear change is, is as close as we can get now to sort of a, like a WRC style gear change. Yeah, okay. It's really, really smooth. The handbrake, as you mentioned, is a cool feature. Yeah. It's an upright unit uh, using obviously AP cylinders. Yeah. As far as fire extinguishers is concerned, you yeah. actually only need you actually only need one handheld and one plumbed in one. Yeah. I have been on the receiving end 10 years ago uh, of, a, of a little fire out in, um, in Belgium whilst doing quite well on a rally. So I've actually got a couple of lifeline fire extinguishers in here. Okay. One for myself, one for the co-driver. Well, one each. Yeah, we've yeah. got one each, yeah. yeah. There's uh, things like quick release steering boss. Yeah, okay. The bank of switches is a bit old school, right? There's but a I, lot of switches in there. It feels old school now, but actually we built this car back in um, like 2012. Yeah. So the modern style board with like push buttons with the little pictures on, yeah. they, they were just starting to come through and they were really expensive. And anybody out there that's watched, uh, sorry, built a rally car or a racing car, they know that a wiring harness is always like 10% of the total build cost. So they're expensive things. I've never bothered changing it. Okay. It's all really functional. I know where everything is. It's dead easy. It's labeled neatly. It's all labeled, yeah, <laughs> I can't get it wrong. You mentioned the Lifeline fire extinguishers. Yeah. There's, I can see more Lifeline uh, parts going on there. So we've got Life Life harnesses in there. Uh, yeah, I've obviously used lots of different harnesses over the last 28 years of rallying. But this particular one, the ease of adjustment um, is fantastic. Right. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with them. Normally the, the, the sort of shoulder adjustment is, is straightforward, but the, the, the side ones are, aren't so easy. Yeah. But the way that the guys at Lifeline have designed these is, is really slick. It's very, very easy to adjust. And when you get to the end of the stage, you can sort of quickly just adjust yourself. Yeah. Get a bit and, and, and then get it a bit more comfortable yeah. for a road section. And then I assume then you can reach yeah, out the window easy enough to get your Starbucks Yeah, yeah, it. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. And the roof vents powering lots of um, lots of air at you, but it also puts lots of insects in. So we've got a bit of ITG foam in <laughs> yeah, that, in that, that hatch here. there to stop all that coming through at me. Yeah. yeah. Is that uh, is that just shoved in there or is yeah, there something, that is, something for the future that, that you're is, working on? That is literally a little bit of bodgery, I'm afraid. <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you I'm making that, but yeah, we're, um, we're, it's something that we, we, yeah. we've just put in to sort of stop all the bits coming through. So I noticed as well, by your, by your uh, nicely laid out switches there, yep. um, two USB ports. Now I'm assuming yep. that it doesn't have Apple CarPlay. It doesn't have Apple CarPlay, no, and it definitely doesn't have Android Auto. <laughs> but what it, what it, in fact, there's two because like iPhones are different to um, Android yeah. in as far as their charging rate. So yeah, we've got a, so we've got it a couple of sockets. To charge your phone. It is literally to charge your phone. <laughs> keeping, keep up with Facebook, yeah. Amazing. What, whilst I'm here, I just want to talk you through a couple of the, the, the stickers that are on the car. Uh -huh. Clearly, ITG is a business of which I represent, but I couldn't, I couldn't go rallying without the help of some of the others. So I've already mentioned uh, GT Motorsport as the engine developer. Mm -hmm. Owen Developments as the turbo people, but then there's some other random ones. We've got um, uh, Southwest Packaging, which is a company that supplies cardboard boxes and, and that kind of thing, and they've been really good to me. Yeah. As have a, a, a new sponsor that's just come on board in Fast R. They're a clothing supplier, and they are a fantastic company to deal with. Uh, I, I'm really I'm really pleased to be involved with those cool. guys. Good shout out to them. Yeah, Amazing. yeah, I've, they're, they're looking after me well, and uh, obviously ITG. Stickers like this are, are, are pretty simple. He puts the stickers on for me. I try and keep his workload as low as I can, <laughs> yeah. keep it all in one piece for as long as I can. Yeah. But um, yeah, he sometimes has to patch it up for me. So then getting around to the back, yep. obviously we've, we heard this thing start before when you're bringing it off the trailer. That's right, yeah. It's much, uh, much louder than a stock Subaru, which are pretty loud to be fair. Yeah. What have we got going on here? So we've got a um, we've we've got a sort of um, a three inch down to sort of two and three quarter inch system. They still run a catalytic converter, but it's obviously a motorsport type cab. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
just because I've come back from Ireland from that last rally where they're not they're not so noise conscious yeah. we put like a noisier sort of straight through back box on Got but it. generally speaking for the UK rallies we would run a, a back box it's a sort of repackable uh, back box okay so it does sound a little bit louder because it sounds the, uh, it sounds a little bit louder in Belgium yeah. and um, an island they don't yeah. seem to be too bothered about the noise okay. they just want the cars to sound cool and they want to keep the spectators out of the way as well <laughs> okay, if yeah, they're too quiet they kind of you come in that's a nice excuse. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll tell you a little feature that we did. We, yeah. We've got actually some stat gauges on the car. So we've got a, a MoTeC digital dash system, yeah. which is fantastic. It's very, very clear. It's, it's, there's a couple of different pages that you can cycle through. But we're still using uh, an old-fashioned um, you know, stack type needle dash, yeah. which you can reset. So the fuel gauge is like that, just to make sure that when the guys are pouring the fuel in, they can keep their eye on that. And it's, it's, it's you know, calibrated to the car, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah I noticed yeah. that. It's quite obviously quite handy. Yeah. Uh, I suppose you don't need to know as much as, as the guys at the back do just here. So yeah, wicked. Um, Wow, well, thanks for bringing it in. No problem. Um, thanks Thank for you. coming in and spending some time with us discussing ITG filters in more detail as well. So if you are looking for more information on ITG as a brand and about their filters in particular, uh, we will leave the link to that video in the description below. There's tons of ITG filters available on our website, uh, along with some of the other components you've seen on the cars, wheels, tires, brakes, etc. Absolutely loads of stuff out there. So do go on the Demon Tweaks website, check it out, put your car information in there, and I'm sure you'll find something to suit you. If you're looking to see more videos like this, where people bring cars in, or race cars, rally cars, road cars, you name it. Uh, do like our channel, subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.